Hello well, guys, we're going to talk about a topic that was recently discussed in a live stream and a set of tools that just became apparent to us. Um, Max is so incredibly versatile. Um, there's so many different options in there that, you know, we're constantly learning new things and I want to share some of that with you. Uh, anytime I become aware of it, I, I like to put a video out there and, and hope it helps people work a little bit more efficiently and um, what I'm doing here is even not the most efficient way I'm sure there's I'm sure there's even more efficient ways to do it but this will help speed something up <coughs> excuse me so in the scene we're looking at this Goodyear building right here uh, you can see it's got garage doors on the garage door on the end two on this side a little entry door and a window um, I prefer to use the billing method where I create a box that's the size of a garage door, 8 feet by 16 feet. And I've got just got that clipping through there. I've got two of these uh, buildings in the scene. One's going to be a cut and one's not going to be cut. The one that's not going to be cut is the one that will end up in the game. Um, the one that I'm cutting is just so I can get the wireframe to apply to the texture and then I can paint the garage door to match the wireframe and then I know that that garage door will end up being you know 8 by 16 uh, perfectly located on the texture and all that kind of stuff um, we've covered that in other videos so I'm not going to go into too much detail the point of this video is to talk about toolbars um, creating your own toolbars um, <clears throat> so I'll quickly show some of the process here so I've got this you know, the old way was right click, convert to edible poly, or apply edit poly modifier to it. Um, there's a couple different things you can do there. You can collapse the stack of modifiers in here. I don't typically like to do it that way, but there's nothing wrong with it. Um, so using these buttons here, um, all I have to do is have that object selected, click boolean. Um, I do have to check my settings in that modifier, or in that... Uh, stack there but so I click uh, cut refine in this case uh, pick up ran B boom cut it now if I want to go back to edit poly on that object I just hit edit poly up here converted it to edible poly without me having to right click doing that or going over here and applying the edible poly um, so I'll just show you the, the workflow and how fast that is so boolean it's retain the settings from the first time Edible Poly, Boolean, pick Operand B, Edit Poly, Boolean, Operand B, Edit Poly, Boolean, Operand B. You can see how fast you can get that done. Uh, go back to Edible Poly. Uh, literally just that fast. And I've got the polygons turned off, so just that fast I was able to make those polygons um, you know you can pretty as far as I can tell you can pretty much add anything to these custom toolbars that you want you can create your own toolbar and what I mean by toolbar is that's a toolbar I can have it floating or I can add it up here to the the top menu area uh, if it's a short menu you can add it over here to the side and it'll snap in there if there's room it does automatically slide like I can't you know slide this over and have it stay over here um, takes a little bit of getting used to um, say so I want to edit, edit poly and start mapping this just that quick instead of going through that list and typing U and getting to it and finding it in the list I'm pretty sure I saw all of these modifiers so if there's a modifier in here that you use a lot especially if it's one of, one of these at the bottom uh, you can see I've got substitute on there from the recent stream that we did found that function um, you can create a button for it up here if it's something that you use a lot obviously you don't want to clutter this menu bar with you know literally everything in here um, if you're not going to use it but for basic stuff like this that you're using a lot um, I've got this selected collapse apparently does not do what I thought it was I thought it would collapse the stack I'm not sure um, so I probably wouldn't add that one back uh, but we'll go ahead and talk about how to create one of these toolbars. Uh, so we'll go to Customize User Interface under Customize there. And with the recording software, it takes a minute for that to come up. 
I'm going to create a new one. I call it Dream 76 2. I'm not going to keep it. But there you can see I've got the toolbar created over here. Uh, I can go ahead and expand that out a little bit if I wanted to. Um, so in this list, you can just type, start typing and scroll down just like any other menu there. So there's the unwrap modifier. So I'm going to basically create the same thing. And you can see it added an icon for that. And I'll go over that in just a second. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create another one here. Um, so I'm going to hit substitute. So you can start typing the whole thing to get closer to. Uh, there's the substitute modifier. So I'm going to drag that into there. Um, let's see, probably edit poly. So there's an edit poly modifier. So I'll add that into there. Um, let's add boolean. Boolean compound object is the one I used. You can see some of them apply with icons and some of them don't. Uh, what I'm going to do is grab that, bring it up here. You can see it automatically switches to a horizontal menu and snaps into the last position there. Uh, once I'm done with that, I can go ahead and close the customized pane there. Uh, you can see I can grab those two vertical lines and slide this around if I wanted over here and wanted another toolbar over here. Uh, you can create separate toolbars for separate groups of things, um, however you want to break that down. Obviously, you're limited to how much space you have up here, but you can, I believe you can add as many rows as you want. Of course, that eats into your workspace. So you have to kind of question what, what you want to do. I believe you can totally redo this menu up here if you wanted to add your own set of icons up here. Um, for these particular functions, I preferred the text instead of the icons. So how I would change that if I wanted them to all be icons or all be... Um, you, you could probably make the toolbar smaller if you used icons for everything. Um, but what you do is just anywhere in those, just right click. So apparently you can't edit the, the top uh, toolbar, but I'm sure you can make your own that replicates that and then edit it that way. Um, but see, the first, the one I made before, I've got it all text. So I'm clicking right click and then edit button appearance. Uh, you can change it to different icons here in this drop down. There's a bunch of different icons available. Um, choose anything that you want. Uh, you can see it changed. Now, for some reason, it doesn't change. Um, I'm going to change it back to unwrap. When I was testing it earlier, it doesn't always change. Um, you can see there where I, I, I did change that to say boolean, not an icon. I can go back and say it's you know clearly there. Um, in that case, what I would do is I'm not going to save this. Is I'm going to close out of 3ds Max. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to save that scene, but uh, it will retain what I just changed. And when I reload it. Um, if I forgot to mention, this is for 3ds Max uh, 2014, but it should apply to most versions of 3ds Max. Um, we'll go back into that one. And now you can see that button right there now says Boolean instead of having that icon. You can make it say whatever you want. Obviously, the shorter the text, the, the better it's probably going to look. Um, you can kind of uh, abbreviate Edit Poly, kind of things like that, instead of Convert to Editable Poly, I think is what the default is. Um, so any, basically anything in these lists, any of these standard primitives and things like that, you can create a button for it up here. Um, just use that to increase the speed of your workflow. Um, save a lot of, a lot of clicks because I'll show you how we, how we did it before, which is having the selected compound objects, boolean, cut refine, pick operand B, uh, right click, convert to double poly, back over here you can see how tedious that is for each one of those yes it can be done yes it's not that bad um, but you can come up with some pretty uh, creative shortcuts um, to cut out a lot of uh, clicking and back and back and forth and menu switching and stuff like that so um, edit poly boolean operand b you can see how much faster that is so 
anything you can do to save clicks in 3ds max helps so uh, hopefully that helps you out um, thank you for watching